Hello everybody, my name is Paul Blackwell and welcome to this webinar on SAP automation using K2's digital process automation for SAP apps. Uh, this is presented to you today by K2 with Supernova. Uh, this is myself and uh, I'll be talking to you initially and then we'll follow that up with, uh, with a look at the technology from my colleague Michael Wall. And then finally, uh, Marios Papa Christodoulou will finish off by telling you a little bit about Supernova and perhaps talking about some next actions. So let's talk about purchase to pay. That's why you're here and the purchase to pay life cycle. As far as I'm concerned, it's pretty straightforward. And although some people might make out it is complex, I see it as pretty simple. You have your organization and you have purchasing and you have the people who are providing things to you, the vendors. Then you have an accounts payable department who are around collecting the money uh, and then the cycle begins again. But of course, there is a lot of interaction going on between each of these different departments and the people in those departments, the organization um, and the accounts payable and purchasing activities are connected. But it's that level of connectivity between them that can have uh, can make the purchase to pay application quite tricky for some organizations where it's not automated. To my mind, automation really isn't an option. It's essential. So you've decided to automate. Let's look at the benefits of P2P automation with K2 as you're going to have to sell this internally. So some of those benefits, and I've written five down here, are around the efficient management of cash flow. Uh, you want to keep your company's books as positive as possible. Uh, better process controls, the ability to be able to see your process, to streamline it and change it. Many times when we're working with organizations, the process that they begin with is not the one that they end up automating, and it does help to make their organization better. You've also got the ability to have real time budget control. You're improving the supplier management and uh, you can also see possibly where you can get early payment discounts. Quite a few organizations will say that if you pay within a certain period of time, then you can reduce the price that you're paying and an automated system will enable you better be, to be able to see that. A good purchase to pay a system will also drive you better user adoption and that user adoption is critical to the success of, of any solution. The next generation technology that you're about to see will significantly improve the antiquated practice of having to navigate from the procurement system to perhaps hosted catalogs to the varying degrees of quality that you'll see in Excel spreadsheets and the like just to complete a simple requisition. A next generation platform like K2 will embrace a single searchable interface, great looking forms, modern interfaces, instead of perhaps a disjointed experience where the moment somebody's on leave, nothing happens and your internal staff can't raise purchase orders and assist with the buying process. Going back to point four there with the happy smiling face, you're going to end up with more open and transparent supplier relationships, which help to eliminate communication barriers. Suppliers want transparent relationships with their customers. The more they know, the better. And the best P2P solutions will eliminate, help to eliminate those barriers to entry and enhance visibility into the partnership between the suppliers and the buyers. You're also going to end up with better analytics, and this gives you more control. How great will it be to have reports that enable you to break out and analyze and spend across all categories? How about tracking and saving within budgets within each cost center. It's all possible with K2. And with access to real time strategic data across the entire buying landscape, department heads have the visibility to drive better spending decisions and unlock savings. In turn, you'll find that it's much easier to be able to do business with those partners. But don't just take my word for it. Have a look at our case studies uh, that are available on our website. Simply put, AMP automation is going to make you more efficient, and it's a fact, especially in today's COVID effective world where employees can be at their desk or working from home or stuck in isolation. The automation of workflows in a K2 solution minimizes the time spent on manual processes. By configuring the workflows appropriately, and that's what K2 is famous for, you can eliminate the need for manual rerouting of approval requests, you can achieve faster cycle times and increase purchase order processing. Just take a look here at Symex and they've now been able to 
turn their purchase order process into something that can take 10 seconds. And of course, spread out over 2,000 purchase order requests a year, uh, it's so much quicker for them to be able to do it. Another example on our website is for Louis Vuitton, uh, but again, there's plenty of others as well. And finally, contract compliance also will save you money. Operational efficiency is crucial to successful procurement processes. A procurement can't operate without contracts. Effective contract processes and transparent spending in a P2P solution delivered by Supernova will enable your organization to achieve contract compliance while driving savings through efficient spending. If you missed the first in our webinar series on contract management by K2 and Supernova, then please put in a request for a copy straight after this presentation. It'll certainly open your eyes to better contracts. So let's get to it. I know you're going to like what you'll see in the next 10 minutes or so. So I'll hand you over to my colleague, Michael, who will start with purchase to pay, end to end automation, and some of his observations about the complexities that he sees in the SAP world. After this session, we'll also go to a Q&A and I look forward to speaking to some of you then. Thank you. A purchase to pay process with SAP can become complex to handle and quickly requires lots of SAP customization. To avoid any customizations in SAP, we utilize K2 platform to handle the full end-to-end -end process, including several approvals and direct interaction with SAP to read and update data. In a classic purchase to pay process, many different roles are involved. So let's check on the roles we will use in this demo. First, we have the requester, John. He wants to order new assets. This request goes always straight to the responsible line manager. For John, this is Julie. After line manager approval, potentially a second approval is needed by CFO, who is Mary. And for further steps, we have Daniel, the purchaser. Additionally, we want to directly involve external vendors to provide actual quotations. Now let's have a look how all these roles collaborate in an orchestrated digital process with K2. John creates a new hardware request on a digital K2 smart form. That shows him direct information from SAP, identifies based on his user context the assets he is allowed to order and of course determinates his line manager. This is Julie. She gets an automated task assigned to approve John's new hardware order. After her positive approval, the process checks on budget limits. This is 1000 euro for John's role. If the limit is exceeded, a second approval by CFO, in our demo Mary, is required. After all approvals, the process queries the potential vendors for the requested materials and sends out a request for quotation. After receiving the quotes from the vendors, the purchaser Daniel gets a task to select one of the vendors based on price and delivery date. If the actual price increases the initial estimated price more than 10%, a reapproval from Mary, CFO, is requested. In the next step, the workflow creates a purchase order directly in SAP and the vendor gets notified that we await the delivery. After delivery, again, Daniel receives a task to confirm and process the delivered assets. If this task is completed, the workflow creates the goods received for purchase order in SAP, and there is the new assets are booked to the right cost center and planned. Finally, the requester John receives a task to confirm the receivement of his ordered hardware and to give us feedback about his experience with the digital order process and if we can improve something. After that, we kick off the invoicing process and analyze the feedback of the requester. Okay, let's run the demo. We start with John in the role of the requester. Here we see a typical employee self-service dashboard. Depending on John's role and permissions, he has several actions available. Be it to request new software, access to systems, managing mail, 
or managing collaboration tools like requesting a new channel in Microsoft Teams. But for this demo, we want to create a new hardware purchase request. On the request form, cost center is pre-populated based on John's user context. He fills in the order details and goes to the purchase request list to define the product he wants to order. This is a multi-item list where you can add multiple items. The product dropdown provides us a list of assets that John in his role is allowed to order. Selecting a product queries the latest unit price live from SAP. Clicking Submit creates a request and starts the workflow. Now we jump into the role of Julie. She is the line manager of John. She received a task notification via email and she can find her central task list at several places. For example, on the dashboard like this. The red bar indicates there is a new task. Julie can review all order details and the positions. She could redirect the task if someone else should make the decision, but in this case, she just approves the task and adds a comment for further involved persons. As we exceeded the threshold of 1000 euro, the workflow assigns a task to Mary, the CFO. After a quick review, she sees the previous comment of Julie and decides that this order can be approved. Now the workflow determines the potential vendors for this order and sends out a request for quotation. We step into the role of vendor 1, Easy Computer Software. The vendor received the email with a link to the proposal form. This is a K2 form accessible by external parties. Data comes directly from K2 and is directly saved back into the defined systems. So vendor 1 provides his delivery date and prices for this purchase order. In parallel, vendor 2, no way tech company, is doing the same. After incoming proposals, be it just one or more, the purchaser gets a task to select the vendor of choice. So we are back in the internal purchaser role with Daniel. He finds a new task and can review all the incoming proposals and select one based on delivery date and prices. Here he selects vendor 1, easy computer software, because of the earlier delivery date and cheaper total amount. The workflow goes on, creates a purchase order in SAP and informs the selected vendor about the new purchase order and that we are awaiting the delivery. So let's have a look into SAP, what happened there. In SAP, we opened a new purchase order with the number that we got back from the workflow. Here we see the products, the selected vendor and more information. Now the purchaser is waiting for delivery. At one morning, a new parcel gets delivered. The purchaser, Daniel, uses the K2 mobile scanner on his smartphone to scan the QR code on the parcel. This provides the purchase order number, the vendor knows and printed on the parcel. The scan of the code redirects the purchaser now to the K2 goods received form of the workflow. Here he can check again all order details and he has to fulfill a checklist. Are all products delivered? Are all items in the expected quality and quantity? Are there any damages? If he cannot confirm, for example, the quality, he can send a task to the actual requester to perform these checks. But if he can fulfill the checklist, the button to confirm the order gets enabled and he can complete this task. The workflow goes to the next step to create the goods received for purchase order in SAP. Let's have a quick look into SAP what was created. Passing the GRPO number we got from the workflow to check the new document in SAP. We see here again all assets, the cost center, the plant and more information that were either entered during the process or determined by the user context of the requester automatically. The workflow assigns now a last task to John, the requester. He needs to confirm that he got the ordered products by picking it up from the purchaser office or getting it delivered by mail probably. Additionally, he has the chance to rate the full process experience and give us a feedback how we could improve this digital process for better experience. After that, the workflow executes two closing steps in parallel. First, it analyzes the feedback. 
positive feedback gets just saved in the feedback list and a negative feedback triggers the feedback analyzing process to investigate what could be improved by the process team. In parallel, the central invoicing process is triggered. This is a reusable process that can be triggered by many different processes, but of course, not part of our demo today. This end-to-end -end process is finished and we have a quick look into the K2 Viewflow report to recap what happened. The Viewflow report is a live process instance report that shows you where the process is currently running, which paths were followed and more details if you click a step to drill down into detail. Here we started with the purchase order request, go to the manager approval because the order amount exceeded the threshold we moved into CFO approval. The purchaser got notified about the new request for quotation process. Then he selected one of the vendors. The actual amount was here cheaper than estimated, not higher, therefore no additional CFO approval. We see the pass was not executed. The PO was created in SAP. Purchaser confirmed goods delivery. Goods received is booked in SAP. Requester closing and feedback analysis and invoicing starts. This was the end-to-end -end automation of the purchase to pay process. And now I hand over to Marius from Supernova. Thank you, Michael, once again for that lovely presentation. For those of you who are with us live, just a reminder that in a few minutes we will have our Q&A session where you can address any questions you have regarding today's presentation to Michael. And with that in mind, please allow me once again to introduce myself. My name is Marios Papachristodoulou, and I'm a Solutions Architect at Supernova Consulting. Supernova Consulting is a leading consulting, technology, and transformation services firm. Combining unparalleled industry experience with leading technology offering, together with its clients, Supernova Consulting creates and delivers business and technology solutions that fit their needs and drive the results they want. We're currently employing over 60 employees with local presence in Cyprus, Greece, Egypt, and India. During its lifespan from 2003, Supernova has performed over 200 SAP and other business solution implementations across over 30 countries. Despite being a consulting company with experience in a wide range of industries, Supernova is primarily known and recognized for its SAP expertise. We proudly carry numerous accreditations from SAP including several Cloud Partner of the Year awards. Our team brings a unique combination of capabilities which can help you achieve your goals through technology and innovation. At Supernova, we currently employ consultants and integrators with experience in a wide range of industries such as energy and natural resources, financial services, consumer industries, discrete industries, service industries, and public services. We at Supernova have been implementing the entire SAP portfolio for our customers and have been doing all kinds of integrations between SAP and a vast number of third-party software, including integrations between SAP ERP and K2 platform. During the last five years, we at Supernova decided to take a turn towards the cloud and intelligent technologies. Since then, we have been investing and training our personnel in various cloud and intelligent offerings, such as the K2 platform. With a tool such as K2 and our business expertise, we are certain that we can help you transform your business processes into the digital age. Through our collaboration with K2, we will continue this series of webinars demonstrating the capabilities of the K2 platform using SAP solutions as a backbone. For the third part of this webinar series, 
we will be demonstrating a customer onboarding process. For that scenario, in addition to the SAP integration, we will also be featuring the usage of robotic process automation or RPA technology. This is an alternative approach to the conventional human input and we are very excited to be showcasing it. We will share the details of the third webinar in due time, so once again we urge you to stay tuned. And with that statement, we would like to thank you all for your time. For those of you watching us now live, we will proceed to the Q&A session. Back to you, Michael. Thanks, Marius. Uh, it's, it's actually Paul here, um, but uh, Michael's, uh, Michael's in a different, uh, a different country, <laughs> but that's fine. Uh, thank you very much indeed. That's, uh, that's absolutely fantastic. Um, as we've said there, there have been some questions coming in, uh, but there is a questions box as well if you'd like to ask some questions. Um, just while you're uh, completing those, I'll start with a, a few that I have here. Um, the first one of which uh, is, oh, okay. So uh, we're talking here, I think what we've seen there is a, uh, could be either a cloud or an on-premise uh, environment of K2. But if it was K2 uh, in the, the cloud, uh, can it connect to an on-premise SAP environment? So Michael, I think that's that's one for you. Yeah, absolutely. So that's a question we hear often. Um, so what we have seen in this demo was K2 Nexus, our cloud product. And the interesting question is how can we connect on-premise systems, um, especially SAP, as most of them run on-premise. And we have connectors for that. So what you have seen in the demo was K2 in the cloud, SAP on-premise. So that's absolutely possible, yes. Oh, fantastic. Um, well, we might as well stick with the, it looks like there's a few SAP people online. Um, so uh, is this using SAP BAPIs or queries on SAP tables? Yeah, so both is possible. What we have seen in this demo was using directly the SAP BAPIs. So that's the, the common use case and the easy way to go. So um, you can connect and use all BAPIs to read data, update data, create new data, but it's possible as well to directly execute queries on SAP tables, yes. Okay, great. Um, well, let's stay, let's stay with the SAP theme here as well. Um, uh, I guess this is perhaps one I could answer, but uh, is the connector to SAP uh, included in K2? Um, so the answer to that is that K2 does come with a, a, a connector to SAP, uh, which was developed by uh, an SAP partner. Um, and uh, it, it does enable, yes, direct integration to both to and from SAP. So you can push and pull data. Very important, it still respects the SAP licensing. Um, so if you do want to do something with SAP data, then you will need a, a license for SAP. Um, but yes, there is a uh, an SAP connector uh, that's available for people to be able to purchase. Um, okay, uh, what's this one say here? Uh, so can the forms, so the, the talking about the forms that you showed, Michael, can the forms be produced in Greek uh, or, or other languages as well as English? So I think they they were all the all the all of them were in English, weren't they? Can you do those in Greek as well? Yes, absolutely. So what we have seen is, of course, our uh, global language English, but we have um, yeah, a feature on, on the platform that allows you to translate all end user forms. So that means you can really define your translations of the wordings. It doesn't rely on a Google Translate or something that could translate your business terms in a wrong way. So you maintain your dictionary, let's say, and that allows you to translate the forms that you built once. So you don't build them in uh, duplicates for every language. You build them once and they are then directly translated in your defined language, what means um, you can define every language you wish to have. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Um, and mobile as well. I, I presume you can just use Yeah, a, absolutely. Uh, yeah, mobile. everything. So I don't mention that anymore, but everything what we see on desktop works on mobile in the same way with K2. Yeah. Fantastic. That's brilliant. Okay. Well, I don't think, uh, let's have a look here. I've got a, something here, mixed questions there. It says, uh, okay. Yeah, I can't really uh, 
yeah, I think I think that's the end of the uh, end of the questions there uh, that I can see anyway. Oh no, hold on, I've got something here about uh, many countries in the EU have adopted the PEPOL e invoicing standards and B two G transactions, but as well as B two B transactions will have to be executed with e documents going through access points certified by PEPOL. Oh, <laughs> does K two allow for connectivity with PEPOL APs? Um, I don't know the answer to that. Michael, have you come across this PEPOL APs at all? Is there something that, uh, that yeah, we can... Uh... Uh, that's, yeah, that's a very special question. I think we will uh, come back to that later, but in general, we can answer that we can connect usually every API any system provides. So be that a, a REST API, API, all data, uh, SOAP web services or others. So we have many connectors that allow to integrate several systems. I'm sure that would fall in this category as well, but we can have a detailed chat about that later. Oh, fantastic. Actually, I'm just seeing a couple of more questions as well. Sorry to keep you going, Michael, but hopefully these questions are really useful to everybody on the call as well. It's always great to have questions. Um, somebody asking, they, they said they've missed the beginning of the session. Um, you demonstrated a very nice user interface. Well done, Michael. Uh, is this Fiori? I know the answer to that. It's not Fiori. That's, a, that's K2, I understand. Um, is the interfacing with SAP happening with OData services? Are these already built or expertise in building by Supernova on SAP ECC systems? Uh, and what about the transition to HANA uh, at the latest stage? Will the integration work in a seamless way? The really good questions there, Nicholas, thank you. Um, so uh, yeah, is the, so the first question, is the interfacing with SAP happening with OData or are you using our integration uh, that we have, Michael? Yeah, so in general, we have different integration options. So one would be via OData, so that would be more the, the SAP um, technology approach so that you build your web services directly on SAP and connect them to K2. Um, that's possible, but the more convenient way for most of our customers is um, to use this connector Paul talked before. So this connector allows then directly to um, interact with the BAPIs or doing table queries and doing that all via this connector tool. So that means you don't have any customization or any configuration on SAP side, what yeah, saves usually a lot of money and time to have that bridge in between. Um, and the other question around HANA, yeah, it would be supported in in the same way so all what we have seen would be uh, compatible there as well so using the BAPIs and so on excellent excellent i mean we we do have we have a lot of customers with sap k2 is a is a technology that isn't based around sap it's a general technology it works with sharepoint it works with oracle uh, but it also happens to to integrate very well with sap around 20 percent of our customers worldwide uh, have sap as well as k2 so um, so yeah, we we have uh, some good options in terms of integration, um, and we work very well. My my son works for SAP, so I have to say it's a great company, great technology, and we're very proud and happy to be working alongside it as well. Um, fantastic. Okay, I think that's the questions that I can now see. Um, uh, Nicholas Costas and the other people have asked questions as well. We will write back to you with a with a more full answer to each of those as well. Thank you, everybody. You. You know the Supernova website, you know the K2 website, we'd be delighted to hear from you if you'd like to explore this further. And as uh, Marius was saying earlier, please do join us. This is the second uh, session. The first one was on contract management. We've got other ones to come uh, around the onboarding of customers, the onboarding of, uh, of employees as well. So look forward to you joining us in the next ones. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you from me, thank you from Michael, thank you from Marius. Goodbye everybody.